Zero-day attacks exploit pro programming errors or other vulnerabilities in hardware or software. It's called the zero-day because there are zero days for software developers to patch the flaw. It's finding a way to open up or crack your data or communications that was previously unknown. Consider that you're putting all of your digital information into a safe. And imagine that that safe has a 10-digit combination at the front that only you know. So your information is very secure. A zero-day flaw is like the crook figuring out that he can take a hammer and hit one little screw on the back of your safe, and the safe will pop open. So he's able to open your safe without the 10-digit code, get into your safe, get your communications, and get your data without your permission. There's a legitimate part of the market. There are cybersecurity researchers and cybersecurity companies, technology companies, who discover zero-day vulnerabilities. Um, and those companies uh, typically work with the uh, software vendors to make sure that the vulnerability is patched in time um, so that uh, users are not left open and vulnerable to an attack by a cyber criminal. Um, but there's also a black market for zero days. And this is um, the place where um, zero days are sold for large sums of money to governments, sometimes friendly, sometimes not. Those governments will then stockpile the zero days and use them at a later time for their own potentially nefarious purposes. These digital weapons can weaken our cybersecurity. If you leave open a flaw in software that um, can be used to access data or communications, that opening can be used by bad actors like cyber criminals. So it can be exploited for purposes of cyber theft, cyber identity theft, and data theft like IP theft. So patching your system does allow you to protect against whatever the known vulnerabilities are, but that is exactly the value of the zero day. It's that there is no patch.